Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. EMC World 2015 here in Las Vegas. I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host for this segment is Steve Chambers. We're both with Wikibon Analyst Firm. You can find all of our research on wikibon.org. Uh, going to dig into the cloud uh, for this segment. Uh, really excited to have Rama Duwahara, who is CTO and the interim CIO of the University of North Texas. Rama, your first time at EMC World and first time on theCUBE, so Welcome. thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, so uh, you know, first of all, you'll be a CUBE alum uh, well, you know, once we finish this. Uh, can Hi. you tell, for, for those that aren't familiar, you know, University of North Texas, you got a couple of campuses there. Tell us a little bit about the organization and your role here. There. Sure. I'm with the University of uh, North Texas System. The system oversees three campuses. We have a campus in uh, Fort Worth that deals with the Health Science Center. Then we have, we have our flagship campus on the, in Denton. And then we have a Dallas campus, which also has a College of Law as part of it. Overall, we have uh, over 41,000 students currently enrolled and we wow. expect to grow that to 45,000 in the near future. Excellent. Wow. I actually have some relatives that live in Denton, so I'm familiar with the area. It just definitely gets hot there uh, for, for a good part of the year. Um, so we're going to talk about cloud. Can we first, you know, I, you know, not to get definitional or you know, arguing over semantics, but you know, what does it mean to have a hybrid cloud? What does that mean to you? Sure. So cloud means a lot of things to a lot of people, yeah. and what it means to us is it enables us to be a service broker and deliver infrastructure as a service. Our goal is to be an IT shared service organization and that's how we started out. And on premise, we figured we could control the quality, the performance, and the delivery of our services. And we can have one place for you to come in and request a service where we can provision this and have automation and orchestration as part of it. That's what it means to be uh, in a hybrid cloud for us. Tell me something about the consumer of that cloud. To describe me some kind of use cases or what people, you know, who, who's renting this stuff off you? You know, who's sure. So we have decentralized IT on campus. So College of Engineering, College of Arts and Science, College of Business, all these different types of colleges, and the three campuses will be the consumers I of see. our cloud. Right. Now, can we extend it out further? Absolutely. But we're starting with that as the goal currently. Okay. All right. And can can you talk to us because hybrid is spanning both the on-prem. And, and, and public uh, to type pieces. You know, what what are you using today? Is it is it the EMC? You know, enterprise hybrid cloud, or Federation Enterprise Hybrid Cloud. They call it today. That's correct. Yeah. So today, what we have in production, in fact, hot off the press as last week, it's yeah. in production. So uh, we have the Federation Enterprise Hybrid Cloud. The next phase of it is to we have already evaluated multiple hybrid clouds like Azure, AWS, Google has an offering, uh, Rackspace and we're partnering probably with Microsoft on the Azure cloud, yeah. and uh, our primary goal is to do our test and development out there, and then move it back into our on-premise for our uh, production environment. So, so, so Rama, if you just went into production, can you walk us through, you know, what was that like? You know, you know what went where? You know, what applications sure. you have where? You know, walk us, and how long did this take? So, it's a pretty intense process initially. Yeah. You start off with a planning phase which consumes most of your time, and then we chose uh, uh, VBlock as the infrastructure behind it, and VC uh, EMC is part of that federation. And uh, we, it took us about 45 days to get that delivered. Then we get into the on-premise migration from our current state into the future state. Uh, that takes approximately about 12 weeks, and there's a lot of planning that goes into it. What's included in that? Enterprise applications. Well, what does an enterprise application mean? It serves more than one campus. We also have campus IT that caters to unique needs on campus currently, and uh, that's what's going on at this point. As part of that, we'll also have a portal where you can come in and self-service what you want. We have, uh, we set up the portal with the metals in mind, so we have four flavors, bronze, silver, platinum, right. gold. Yep. And then we have a custom configuration that you can request okay. that goes through a workflow process. And, and is that, and, and do I, am I getting a VM there or am I getting a, an actual application or, because I think that's where it starts to get fuzzy on the edges of hybrid cloud, isn't it? You that's know? a great question. Yeah. 
So what this hybrid cloud covers is infrastructure as a service. Gotcha. So you get a VM, you get storage, you get all the computing and networking behind it. Right. All of that's orchestrated through this hybrid cloud. Cool. The next phase is to get platform as a service and then get software as a service. Right. That's how you extend the automation and uh, on our hybrid uh, cloud, the reason we want it on premise is to work on those types of things which require some customization. And what are you what are you doing around identity of users and things? Because that that seems to be can be can be easy or it can be gnarly for people. And I, and I don't know what the requirements are in, in, in education. So in terms of uh, the consumer that you're dealing with here, the identity the identity is kind of screened and pre-provisioned. Okay. And you can request it as a guest, but that will require a longer process. I see. And on the back end, we have single sign-on to integrate all that to Active Directory. Right, so Active Directory, single sign-on, so I'm not logging in every single time with my that's credentials. That's correct. Okay, that's really good. And so, you, you're talking about Azure, so you, have you connected these? Are you going to connect them? How's, how's that going to How's that going to work? Are you going to connect networks? stretch networks and things That's like correct. that? So we're going into um, a high availability environment, okay. and to do that we use EMC's VPlex Metro solution, and that's how we're stretching our current uh, enterprise data center and our secondary one, the services to that, right. and uh, that's the technology we use. Both always on? Always on, if nice. it goes down, yeah. instantly up, yeah. and uh, the great thing is we have the entire stack of the storage uh, tier, starting from Extreme I.O. to VMAX to wow. VMAX to Isilon, and all of that is orchestrated through the automation tool called Viper. Yeah. So, so Rama, can you walk us through a little bit about the, how you made the decision to kind of go with EMC's cloud, that, you know, they're relatively new sure. uh, in, in this space there. Were you an EMC customer to begin with, or you know, how, how, walk us through some of that. Yeah, we were not an EMC customer to begin with, so what we did is we looked at converged infrastructure and uh, did the evaluation on that and found out the VCE V-Block was the only truly converged infrastructure. The rest of them had reference models. Yeah, okay, could you share who, who else you were looking at? Or? Yeah, we, we uh, looked at uh, NetApps, Hitachi, and uh, a, a few others, IBM, HP, yeah. uh, what I would call the top six. Yeah. We kind of looked at all of them, yeah. and uh, Dell was one of them. And they're they're all they all offer good services, but in terms of truly converged infrastructure, where you can make one phone call and get your services, we found uh, uh, VBlock and VC to be the leader. Cool. I think which is also validated by Gartner and the others. So it's just not my observation. Could you uh, tell me a little bit about the, the structure of your staff? Because yesterday we had a really interesting day on EMC code and talking about DevOps and the changing. You know, it's not just about developers or operations, it's working together, and we've heard from some customers today, they're already doing that, but they're not calling it DevOps. You know, people are getting along and they are working. You know, you, you've, hybrid cloud necessarily has lots of different technologies in it, and you've got to run it, and, and you're talking about moving to an always on, which, which sounds fantastic. How, how is your team structured to, you know, architect, deploy it, do the planning, operate it? How does so the enterprise architecture of this is one of our weaknesses that we hope to solve by going to the hybrid cloud solution. Cool. So we're able to get pre-tested uh, converged infrastructure where we don't have to go in and do that. In terms of our staff, we're, before the converged infrastructure, we were in silos as a VM team, as a storage team, backup team, and a server team. Yep. Going forward, that's one converged team. And then you're talking about the application side of it, where before they had to request a service and wait on infrastructure, they would directly go in and get things provisioned to work on their infrastructure. Uh, they, they don't need to wait on the infrastructure team. I think that's the biggest change. The next change you're going to see is we're kind of breaking up IT into two groups, the demand and the supply group. And right. the demand is always exceeding supply at this point. Right. So we're trying to balance that out and the application team falls on the demand side of IT, where most of their requests comes from the business units. And we're trying to offset those by shifting some of our resources currently on infrastructure into the application side, or what I call project management side of it. And we're brokering services externally also to meet those demands. And would you say what you, and I, I, I like the direction that's going in, I really do. And um, do, you, do you think that's typical amongst similar organizations like yourself, or do you think you're kind of leading a charge here? Uh, I think we're pioneering this. Yeah. It is not. It is typical that some organizations have ventured into shared services. Yeah. That model has matured. 
But in the higher education vertical of public sector, it's in its infancy. Yeah. We have a long way to go there in, in terms of catching up with the private sector. Yeah. So we're working hard on that currently. So, so Rama, I'm curious from, from the application standpoint, what does moving to a hybrid cloud do to be able to allow you to serve the business you know, faster, deploy applications faster? Uh, you know, how does it fundamentally change your business? So we have some key IT initiatives. For example, data warehousing, mobility, our CRM project, meeting our goals on retention, advising enrollment for students. Uh, at, at the end of the day, we're in the business of making students successful. And to meet those objectives, I think the hybrid cloud is able to give us the performance and the reliability we need from an infrastructure standpoint to meet the application needs. From the application side, what this enables us is to move very fast. Mm. Before we couldn't do that, mm. and it's time to market. And the other thing we're talking about is before we had a huge consumption gap, we would over provision and under consume. Now we are able to bring that in line with the mm. consumption needs of campus, mm. thereby what I call removing waste and reallocating that to some of the application and business needs. Yeah, there's some interesting benefits there. What must be the hardest thing about it? I mean, have you questioned your sanity while you've been doing this? Or yeah, uh, I think the people side and the transition mm. into how we do business has been a very hard part. Has of the it. technology always worked flawlessly and, and interconnected I, very easily? I wouldn't say it has worked flawlessly, mm. but what has happened is every time there have been bumps on the road, we've been able to resolve that uh, either with the EMC Tiger team mm. or people who have been part of the project. It takes a it takes a village to put this together. Yeah. I mean, there are a number of different partners who are at the team and as part of the project, and you have to have great project management. Yep. I think that's one of the challenges, and uh, as long as you have great project managers, yep. I think you can accomplish it. So Rama, having just put this in production, I'm wondering now that you have hindsight <laughs> to, yep. to consider, you know, what advice would you give your peers to say, hey, I could have done this a little bit better, or I should have planned this a little bit better, or you know, boy, I wish I had known this before I went into it. Yeah, so all this started off with uh, our you know, vision of how are we going to be a strategic partner to our business? Mm -hmm. And how do you build a high performance team? Mm -hmm. If you're constantly dealing with what I call the basics, mm -hmm. then you're not able to get into the more strategic or innovative things you want to do. So uh, my advice to those who want to embark on this is you need great leadership. That's it. That has to be at the table because many of these initiatives cannot be driven from what I call grassroots levels or bottom up. Uh, it has to be top down and bottom up at the same time. You have to have a great vision. And then you need to find some passionate people in your organization who can bring their passion to execute. And on top of that, you got to have good values yeah. that you can uh, put out there that the people can emulate and go in the direction that you choose to go. All right. Those are the things I would say you need to bring to the table right yeah. off the bat. Yeah. So, so Rami, so you're the interim CIO uh, for, for, for the system there. Uh, I was talking to Vic Bagat, who's the CIO of EMC this morning, and he said, you know, big challenge is it used to be, you know, hand us $10 million in 24 months and we can build it to Taj Mahal. And we were, IT is really good at doing that. Yeah. Now it's faster, repetitive, you know, it, 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 it's different. You know, how do you prepare your organization uh, for this kind of uh, you know new world, as we say, it's always changing faster, and there's yeah. always something new to learn. Yeah, the old uh, adage used to be, "Give me faster, cheaper, and better, but choose any two. Yeah. Uh, and uh, our philosophy on that is, we need to do it faster, better, and cheaper, but we also need to do it friendlier, yeah. because there's a lot of consensus building you have to do to to accomplish this. So, uh, if you embark on a journey, that's how you have to look at it. The time to provision is no longer many years or many months. That's It's down to how soon can you do it. I'm talking 12 to 25 weeks here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it, it, It's interesting, the, the uh, you know faster, better, cheaper. I hear if you listen to the DevOps community, or Pivotal specifically, there's uh, the guy that runs Cloud Foundries, James Waters, yeah. friend of the queue, we've had him on a number of times. He said, today it's faster, faster, faster. Yeah. And if you can go faster, 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 it can take care of everything. Do you believe that, or you know, I mean, you know, money's still got to be an object. It it, it is. Um, I think it's not that simplistic. Yeah. That's the, you know, that's how I view it. Uh, Pivotal's got great upside, 
and in fact, I think uh, a lot of what you're dealing with in terms of doing analysis of unstructured data, they can play a great role. Yep. Um, but there has to be a foundation to get there. And, and I think the hybrid cloud kind of lays, that gives you that platform. So this is work. not your termination point, it's not no. the end of what you're doing. So we have a Majority framework <laughs> where there is uh, converged infrastructure, there's virtualization, automation, These are the there's steps. the service desk, Yep. IT service management, yep. and then the financial side of this, where we need to show transparency. Yeah. So we use vRealize Suite to achieve that, uh, which is part of the federation. Yep. And on top of that, we have to govern it with proper security and uh, governance structure. Mm -hmm. And that that's also Sounds very easy. challenging, yeah, I, even I, though you <laughs> say, hey, we need to get there. Yeah. So this is the first phase of it. Oh, yeah. So I'm mean, Rama, you know, the management and orchestration layer is the next battle for the whole industry. I mean, That's it needs correct. to be simple, it needs to be able to, um, I, I know you've just deployed it, but how's it going so far? How does this, from an operational model, uh, you know, work for you, for your environment? Yeah, so it, it's going well. I think our challenge is we didn't have a team that was ready for automation and orchestration. Yeah. So the people side of it, we had to address it with training and proper change management to get those things going but, in place. But do you think, from your experience, you only find these things out when you do it? Because obviously you've done a lot of planning and thinking, but yeah. uh, you know, we, we heard stories yesterday uh, from EMC themselves, who've got a huge amount of IT, and they said, right, we're going to treat infrastructure as code. It's the right thing to do. And they learned so many lessons which they shared yesterday. I mean, I, I think that's one that you've been through as well, right? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And uh, you know, you're spot on when you say, you can plan all you want, yeah. but when you're on the pioneering or leading edge of this, you're going to run into issues that you're unable to discuss it with others because they haven't done it. Right. So what do you do? You have to have a team that can adapt fast. Right. And that's a key thing. That's why I say build your team with some diverse life experiences. There's right. only so much training you can do. And then with that diversity, you overcome some of the challenges that you face as a team. Well, that's an interesting point of view. I mean, can you... I can't, from what you've told me, it sounds like you're on a journey, and you, are you past the point of no return now? You know, you mentioned leadership. Could someone turn around and say to you, look, this is crazy, it's costing us money, let's just go back to the old way. Can you ever imagine that happening? I, I don't see that happening because uh, we spend a lot of time planning, and if you looked at mm. the TCO, uh, we did a lot of analysis using activity-based costing studies, yep. where we studied the enterprise cloud outside, and the offerings, yep. and we're anywhere from 30 to 60% cheaper. Yep. Unless you're moving workloads in daily, in and out, in yep. production, which we don't do, yep. uh, then it makes sense to have an on-premise hybrid cloud solution. So, so, so that's why I don't see us turning back at this point. So we hope to build on this because, as I told you, there, there are many more steps to take here to be a truly mature organization. Gotcha. What would you say to um, maybe a similar organization organization yourself that's not doing hybrid cloud you know if I was a, a peer of yours yeah. and it, you know and I said I'm not, I'm not doing hybrid cloud you know would, would you think I was crazy or you know maybe would there be good reasons for me not to be doing it what, what I, think? I think I would ask you to keep an open mind on that because mm -hmm. there could be things that you, you could do that are more efficient without a full analysis it's hard to say but you're pretty safe in betting that you're going to have some efficiencies simply because of the maintenance time and all the back-end integration you're going to have to do, is which it, is no longer there. Is it almost a no-brainer to do it's it? It's almost a no-brainer. <laughs> all right, I, I think that's a perfect line to end it on, Rama. I really appreciate you digging in uh, to the hybrid cloud solution from the EMC Federation. Uh, we'll be right back with lots more customers, uh, luminaries and more here from EMC World. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE TV's live coverage. I'm Stu Miniman with Steve Chambers. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with our next guest right after this quick break.